across the world wide web on your mobile devices on social media platforms this is jambo radio www.jamboradio.co.uk we are multilingual we are conversational in the languages you best understand we are jambo radio jambo radio inspiring transformation hello and welcome to another episode of moments with enoch and shade my name is enoch and i'm here with juliet our co-host sitting in for shade today and we've also got kishi and we've got kishi's dad tayo joining us all the way from the livingston yeah livingston, livingston. Fan- fantastic yeah. so um on today's show we'll be talking or having a conversation with most most especially kishi and a bit with tayo as well around her journey as a young athlete in scotland what the experience has been like, what the challenges have been, what the successes have been, and you know, just and I think for for me, the reason why we wanted Kishi on the show was just to because now there is a growing number of you know ethnic minority folks living here in Scotland, and some of them, including me, are finding that our kids are interested in sports. So it's just sort of um, navigates that journey with Kishi on how they realize okay, she she's and she enjoys sports, and then sort of to where she is today. So that's what we're talking about. So you can join. Um, you can you can um, join the conversation um, today by calling the studio on 0141-530-2787. Or you can send us a, a WhatsApp. We are on 0745-990-6822. And if you're on social media and you want to send us a message, you can send us a message at Jumbo Radio Scotland on Facebook, Jumbo Radio 1 on Twitter, jamboradio.scotland on instagram of course we'd love to hear your contribution to this particular um, topic so you can email us as well at info at jamboradio.co.uk fantastic so i'm going to big kishi up a bit so kishi you're the you're the second fastest under 16 in scotland is that correct third third third, third. What, what took the second spot off you <laughs> Ah, uh, we need to do. We need to, we need to sort her out, right? <laughs> so you're the third fastest under 16 female yeah. female runner in yeah. Scotland. Is for sprinting. Is that for 100 meters or 200 or both of them? Both of them. Yeah. In, in, impressive. So that is impressive. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> he was really Very proud. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. It, it's so you 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 must be fast. Actually, yeah, you are definitely faster than me. <laughs> Um, so, you know, so Kishi is one of the, she's faster than 99.9% of people living in the world. So it would be interesting to understand, you know, your journey from, I guess, when you started is when you were, I don't know, under 10 and to, to where you are today. But before that, I think um, Juliet has got, has got a question um, for you. So what I want to know Sorry. is, I, I, I'm sure our listeners would want to know who Kishi is without talking about your involvement in sports. So who is Kishi without the sports beat? Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. You're like, what else do I do apart from sports? <laughs> Nothing really. Because <laughs> it takes up most of my time. Yeah. I like to make cookies sometimes. <laughs> if they, work, bring some for if us they work out. <laughs> uh. Maybe at some point. <laughs> If she's coming back then she may remember to bring one or bring indeed. some along indeed indeed so you like to make cookies but then apart from that it's 99.9 percent just sports, sports pretty printing. much yeah. yeah it's interesting I, I always say this right and i know kishi i'm not trying to talk about you like you're a young you're a child or anything but <laughs> i always say the best way to keep kids busy is just get them into sports <laughs> Because they won't have time to think about anything else. Yes, so um, let me, I was chatting to my brother who is just 16 years old. And, you know, in his school, there, there are some kids that are quite troublesome and they do cause a lot of trouble. And I, I was asking him the other day, I was like, are those kids involved in sports? And he said, no. I was like, if they were involved in sports, there are probably less chances of them because all they'll be focused, in, focused on is how can I get better? Or I can, how can I, what am I doing at training today? How do I need to plan for school tomorrow and all that? But yeah, I'm always fascinated by names. So your name is Kishi Aremu. So what does Aremu mean? I have no idea. Yeah, okay, well, you're <laughs> going to find out today. <laughs> so 
Oh. So that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Even me, I struggle to, no way. to give it. <laughs> but I, 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 it's, it's more um, where we come from. From I am originally from the um, southwestern part of Nigeria. Okay. Um, it's, what, it's part of what they call um, an oriki. Okay. okay. So yeah. southwestern part of Nigeria. So that's sort of the predominantly Yoruba, Yoruba people. Part of, okay. So it's it's more like um an oriki and what that basically means is is it's is, is um a name that they used to eulogize you okay. basically. So um rather than having a deep meaning I I, do, I can't tell you <laughs> exactly what that is. <laughs> Um, but it's, it's it's got stuck as as our family name okay. um, and 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 that's what we um we use okay. but i can tell you what kishi means or she can explain okay. what her full name is as well um, yeah. for go, herself go for uh, it so i'm pretty sure itawa kishi means it, it's our kishi itawa kishi it's our it's our kishi. Kishi. i think okay. that means the throne of god can't be moved exactly so it's a lua kishi kishi so god's wow. throne is unmovable yeah, okay. is in yeah in simple parlance that's big how did you come up with that yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a very huge name yeah i believe yeah it's, it's an inspiration from mm. god himself i believe Impressive. it's a unique name as well because mm -hmm. you probably never meet anyone or a lot of people with that yeah, name with that so, name, yeah, yeah good stuff good stuff okay that's good um you mentioned the southwestern parts of um, Nigeria, where where precisely? Um, so, or, uh, precisely from Obomosho. That's in Oyo State. That's yeah? in Oyo okay. State. Yes. Yeah, you know your geography, right? Yeah. No, my sister actually studied in Oyo State. So ah, she right, studied okay. in University of Ibadan. Ah, so right, I, I okay. visited there okay, a couple okay. of times. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, Fantastic. So that's that's um, yeah that's um, my where I come from. Okay. Um, Obomosho. Uh, Lovely. So yeah. let's dive in. So Kichi, you. You're 15, 16 years old now? 15. So let's take it back. It's nine years. So how did this whole sports thing start? How old were you? How did it all become? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was seven or eight. And okay. my parents just put me in athletics for another after school club. Okay. okay. And then okay, so you were doing athletics and other stuff? Then. Yes. Yeah. All right, okay. So what other stuff were you doing apart from athletics? Taekwondo. Okay. Mm. Swimming. I think that's it. Okay. 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 That's nice. You, you, from your accent, you sound like you were born here. Were you born here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Fantastic. Here being Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you go into athletics at the age of seven. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. So and then at that age, it's just. It's, should I, I was gonna say fun? It's just for fun, right? So they're just teaching you the basics. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going for sessions once a week. Yes, yeah, uh, for only an hour, mostly yeah. playing games. Okay, okay, okay cool. Uh, and were you, you know, at what point, so t tell us the progression then, at what point did you start thinking, oh, I'm actually good at it, or at it, or at what point was, was I'm tired thinking, you know, maybe, maybe Kishi is good at it. How did it also evolve from there, from that point on? Uh, okay, um, I, I think, it, and you can come in as well, Kishi, at any point. Um, just just like she, she said, it started off that way. Um, get them engaged, get them occupied. Um, um, I mean, I growing up, I did a few sports myself, um, and uh, my mom was an athlete herself. No <laughs> way, no <laughs> way. Um, so she, did, she didn't she go doing? pro. She was yeah. a sprinter as well. Ooh, okay. But she didn't go pro. <laughs> wow. So um, I, I can say it, there was just that. Um, not not getting yourself active, so okay. that was that was in me, um, as as a person. So with the with the children, um, as Kishi Kish just said, you just get them into something. They may end up, you know, liking one um, better than the other. Um, so they, they were doing. She was doing. Um, they were both doing. The younger sister called Kito. Um, they were both doing taekwondo. They were both swimming. Um, they were both doing athletics so Kishi started with the athletics first because okay. you need to be um she's two years older or two and a half years older than Keaton so she started first and so the whole idea was to get them into it get them engaged um and over time um there'll be various local competitions that are set up and they just want all the kids to come together and and just compete and so bef so before you go far yes. I'll take you back slightly so because I'm just thinking I want parents listening to this to sort of understand the flow right mm -hmm. so i'm a parent as well so because 
when you when you've got kids you've got all these competing options of where to stick them in that's right so how did you decide in your case to go athletics swimming and taekwondo why those three because there are a lot of other options uh, there are a lot of other options yes and i'll tell you um my thinking with, with the moms as with, mm. with, with kishi's moms as well um is uh, our thinking was first um swimming is a life skill um so that that's one um and also um bringing up two girls um i wanted them to be able to defend themselves okay yeah. <laughs> so that's logic okay okay like so that. so i wanted them to be able to defend themselves so they had to go into taekwondo um, mm-hmm. and learn the basic it's it's a it's a very controlled um a, a disciplined um although it, it looks like they are fighting but they are, they are well disciplined okay. it's a very disciplined um uh, what i call it sports and um, it's a disciplined sport so so but mainly you know um if need be to be able to stand up for themselves and to be able to defend themselves um not anticipating anything but yeah. just basically just, giving just them, them life prepared. skills mm-hmm. yeah. um and and so when it comes to to athletics it started off because the the for the younger ones uh, they call it generally the run jump and throw club um so they they go into all sorts and uh, they do some running they do some jumping um, and they do some throws um, so generally get them engaged and then they can find their path in that process and and so that was the whole idea just get them into it get them active um key thing there get get them active um out of the house not you know the we're in a society where we can get so sucked in and you know all children have access to be the tablets and the TV mm-hmm. all the time without that um, being active enough um, and that will help them in yep. their life and in their journey. Okay, so there, there was a lot of um, thoughts put into that then. So for so for, for our son, um, well, we've got a daughter as well. <laughs> well, I just focus on this one. So he, I think what we did was we, with the swimming, that was mandatory. Like, yeah, you need to go swimming because you, you, you needed to survive. And then we just sort of took him to a lot of places. So he did taekwondo as well, did basketball. In, in fact, he did basketball too recently. We'll have to drop that now as things kick off with athletics and football. Um, and then we took him to football at, as well. He hated it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we took, you know, he was involved in, and then music, his teachers at school said, oh yeah, you know, he's got very good musical voice. You should register him as, um, to join the choir. We registered him for choir. So at, at some point, our Monday to Saturday was just activities. But I enjoyed it. I, I, at the beginning, it was a lot of work. After, after a while, I was like, I actually enjoy doing this because I get to spend time with him in the car. So we became, his mom started getting a little bit jealous <laughs> because we just became pals. So anything he wanted to do is just me and my dad. Me and my dad, <laughs> mom is like so. Um, but then that was how we did it, and then now we're getting to a phase where it's like, okay, he really enjoys football and he's good at it, and he really enjoys athletics and he's good at it, and we're now having to sort of shelve off all those other things. Because I think that's what some parents do: just throw everything at them, yeah. and then see the one that sticks. That's right. And then yeah. um, just sort of, just sort of, um, just sort of run with it. Exactly. So, so I guess for you then, Kishi, at what point did you start? getting to that point where it was athletics that was sticking how did that all came to be i think it was when i started doing more competitions and noticed i was always like in medal contention okay. okay so then i wanted to spend more of my time focusing on athletics rather than the other sports okay so around what age was this if you remember maybe 12 13. okay so recently yeah, recently. No, I, I would say before really? i would say before then i i, I would say <laughs> i mean from a parent's perspective i, I would say around about the um, 11 12 okay um you you begin to see um and then with discussion so it's not a decision that although they have a major part to play um it's a discuss is 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 a decision that will involve not just the athlete themselves or the upcoming um, younger athletes themselves their coaches um, as well as the parents so as a parent you're going to the competitions and you're seeing them doing doing well in that com- com- um, in the competitions and you say oh there's there's some potential there um, and for the sake of not pushing too hard as well um, you look for a reasonable time you engage their their coaches as well and when you're getting the same feedback then the coaches because the coaches at the clubs have um 
a lot to do as well. They have a great responsibility um, that, that, that is placed on them. Um, I mean, most of them volunteer, but they're doing a very great, great job um, in terms of helping younger athletes. Um, so the, the, the coaches will come to you as well and say, this is what they have observed and they guide them in the areas of their strength okay. and and as they guide them in that area um then we can begin as parents to also encourage them because it's something you have seen as well standing on the sidelines so you, you can encourage them and get them going so this thing you just mentioned now ties into one of the questions that i want to ask right which i think might even be um beneficial to like other parents listening so were there any traits did you notice any traits like while they were growing up so i mean like when they were still like maybe six seven even before you decided to throw them into these areas that you did or was it just that decision and then they grew grew from there yeah i would not say there's any particular trait. um but I, I, it's, the whole idea is just to get them um engaged and get them active um, and if they see it as as something they want to pursue, then you'll be there to support them through the process. Okay. So rather than you know seeing a particular trait and saying you must you must go through this, no, um, I, th I think it's just getting them in, active in the first place, um, exposing them to what is obtainable and what is available out there, um, and over the course they can then develop and and choose which path they want to go. Yeah, because I think uh, as parents, sometimes you know, parents can get into that pushy mode, right? Where maybe a parent has tried to to go pro on football, didn't work out, and they think, right, I'll push my kid to. So I'll, all the mistakes I've made, I will use it to make sure my kid doesn't make that mistake and try to push that kid. Meanwhile, the kid is not interested in football; he's interested yeah. in swimming. So, so that there could be there could be that as well. But you know, something you said I picked up on is around having that relationship with the coaches and people around as your well. kid so that's really important that constant communication exactly right um because i think what, what happens sometimes when we go to these activities is just drop off the kids at six pop off sit in the car and just smash out emails or just do something else seven o'clock pick up the kid off you go so there's no <laughs> feedback system yeah. in place where you're like well, how is he doing is he enjoying it you know exactly. so th there needs to be that you need to create that yeah. that time for for the feedback uh, i mean it doesn't have to be all the time and i mean frankly um so many times you just you you have so many things that you need to do and you, you may have to drop them off and come back to get them but just creating that avenue that conscious um consciousness and and making sure that there's that avenue to engage with with the coaches be in the in their competitions as well mm. um see what they're doing um ask them how things are going um as well and just just being involved as, yep. as parents yep. um is, is very very important fantastic so I, I think we should just pause a bit right oh, okay and let's move to Kishi. I was going to say that as well. Like, yeah, let's focus on Kishi. Yeah, so that let's just rewind, okay? And um, tell us how growing up was like for you. What was growing up like? Did you have like any early memories that you were very fond of? Did any of those memories tie into sports? Because I think we're like focusing on the sports bit. But mm -hmm. let's just see how growing up was like for you. Um, I think growing up was quite. I think growing up was quite nice because I've seen Nigeria, so I was happy I was born here. Oh, <laughs> don't say that. That is a low blow. <laughs> it looks, life, life looks harder there. <laughs> you know that. In, Fair, 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 fair to yeah. our, our previous <laughs> guests said the same thing. It was like, you know, life is hard. They are moving to Scotland. <laughs> so, okay, fair point. Yeah, life works <laughs> way harder there. And seeing that um, in the Olympics that the Nigerian MC failed to enter um, favor of Philly for the 100. Yeah. I was like, I don't really like how they failed to enter one of their great athletes for the event because that's just taking away a medal Ordinary. from the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think they would prioritize sport really over there. And I've heard about lots of problems happening in the country as well. There's problems everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> there is. 
Oh, uh, interesting, interesting. Uh, well, you know, you will be an, uh, you, you probably end up being a Nigerian ambassador at some point. <laughs> at some point, yeah. At some point, you never know, you never know, because you got dual citizenship, right? But so, so, and also, so I'm bringing it back to sports to an extent. So, three sports, or you are involved in three. At what point then did you, or did you both decide? Or have, I don't know, maybe that point has not even happened. Do you still? Are you still in taekwondo and swimming? Um, swimming, there was just different levels, and okay. then we reached. Well, I reached the top level, so yeah. there was nothing else for me to do. Okay. But taekwondo, I stopped because I stopped enjoying it. <coughs> Excuse me, I stopped enjoying it, so I wanted to stop. Okay. And then I had athletics to fall back on anyway. Okay. 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 Interesting. So the swimming, you said you, you got to the top level. So the top level is, if we throw you in the water, you survive type level pretty much yeah cool cool can you swim um sorry. i can i can <laughs> move around in <laughs> <laughs> so if you throw, uh, are you at that level where if you throw you in the water you survive i will survive yeah oh, for okay. a bit <laughs> <laughs> that's what matters someone come bet you within the next few minutes i think the, there's those I, I, few I, minutes i, I will try can. and move and swim. Yeah, yeah so i think i I'll, I'll go through the i'm not i'm not i'm not afraid of water so lovely, lovely. um yeah so I, I will definitely swim a bit but I won't Lovely. class myself as a as a pro swimmer. Okay. No. Good stuff. Good stuff. And then also, so you then, around the age of 11, 12 was when you realized, okay, this there's there's something here, right? And was there a conversation between the two of you, or well, between you and the parents? Or at what point did you say, let's take this more seriously? How did that all come to be? I don't really think <laughs> there was, was there no a official proper, proper yeah, conversation yeah, about it. Just sort of evolved. Yeah. Yeah, it's a natural I think it was just a natural progression, progression in yeah. that in that line. Mm-hmm. Um because she she will come um and say, you know what, yeah, this the competitions we need to register for these competitions. Um, we need to, we need to, we need to. So over over time, as you see that, because um, you get, um, if you are registered with a club, um, a local club, they will notify you of um, competitions, upcoming competitions, and they will tell you specifically as well that they need to register for particular ones, and they need to be in those competitions. So, and over time when, it, you get the the message, um, mm. and then so it's just being proactive about it, okay. um, and and then um, just carrying them. Now she will just come and sit beside me, with with a mark and say, "This is the list. Ooh, we yeah. need to go through this now." <laughs> so, <laughs> Link it into your calendar, yeah. and and so like, f- as as a parent and as a family, there must have been a lot of sacrifices along the way. Um, like from your point of view, what sacrifices do you think has, has, has been made or are being made well, over those years? Normally, they have to give up like their Saturdays to come and watch, or sometimes Sundays, so they'll miss church. Is that come. why you don't come to my parties? Tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All those parties I invite you to. <laughs> uh, that's, that's part of it. <laughs> That's that's okay. part of it. Yeah. Okay. But even not from even from your perspective as well, not just the parents. Mm. I mean, you're sacrificing for for the athletics there and mainly the sprints, aren't you? You you give up your time. Yeah. 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 You, you give up sometimes as well being in church because uh, I remember. I mean, it was a June, and that she was saying to me, "Dad, I've not been to church for four weeks." And she wanted to go the, um, I think the, there was a week that she said, oh, well, I need to go because I've not been to church in four weeks. So th- those are the, those compromises. They are, yeah. they are difficult, um, um, especially for, for me as a, as, as a church leader. Um, it, it's, it's a challenge yeah. for me to be absent in church on Sundays. Um, but it's trying to get the right balance in there um, and, and just ensuring that, you know, um, we keep keep things going. Okay. Indeed. Do you plan to go pro at some point? Yes, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. All right, that's good. Is there any way your academics ties into this? Is there any relationship between your academics and, and um, the sports? If if your grades are good it and you get a sports scholarship, it would be it would just be less of like a payment for uni. Okay. But even if you get an academic scholarship, I think it would be fine. Okay. So, are you working on like keeping your grades up 
just to ensure that you get yeah. there. Yeah. All right. You That's looked at your dad before you answered that question. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she did. And, uh, I think we, we got the gist now because um, yesterday was uh, Scotland's results day. Of okay. course. Yeah, That's so in NAT5. The yeah, NAT5. Five, NAT5, five, five, um, the highest and the advanced highest yep. all came okay. out yesterday. Okay. So, um, and yeah. Um, so she, you you she did NAT5, right? Yes. How was yeah. it? Um, A's and B's. Okay. 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 And is that, is that where you need to be operating now to get into the scholarship range? Or? Yes. Yeah. So for hires, I'm aiming for all A's. Okay. okay. So it'd be easier. Okay. Yeah. So this is scholarship in outside the country or within? Yeah, outside yeah. of the country. America? Yes, hopefully. Okay. So why America? Because they take their sports seriously and they like to take track seriously as well. Okay. Okay. And okay. I've, do, do you know people that have gone down that route or? I have a friend whose brother has gone to uni in america and he was doing olympic trials before okay mm. what's his name Bera. i know him yeah yeah yeah. he was he was a finalist at last year's award ceremony yeah mm, yeah, okay. yeah it's, it's the black scottish awards yeah the black scottish awards okay. yeah i'm trying to remember his son name as a yoruba ajala but yeah. they are not yoruba they are from benin or yeah, that's okay right. okay yeah. interesting interesting so it was actually at the trials yeah but it didn't get through no i don't think so yeah okay okay yeah i mean and they have people that they look up to as well so when a few of the athletes um train abroad um once you get to a, a certain level to further develop um mainly because we haven't been a bit into it um the understanding is that the um funding for a- athletics is not and and track and field is not a traditional mainstream british sport um, now is more publicity yeah. than than it was, but they are not traditional mainstream. The likes of you know when you want to compare with the likes of football, football with the likes yeah. of rugby, mm-hmm. um, so those are those are core, or the, the, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or even you know fencing in some areas and and things like that. Um, but um, having said that, the the facilities that are available are limited um, up north. Um, why is it bigger UK issue? Up north is even you know more restricted in terms of facilities that are available to help um, athletes, athletes develop. further further develop. Yeah. And you see that a lot of the times, you know, the likes of the well-known athletes um, like Laura Moore, um, they, they, that are Scottish, uh, yeah. end up you know they do occasional training when they are here for competitions, but they are mostly out of the country training. And um, one of their ex-school guys, Josh Kerr, as well. Um, he went. He went to uni in the well. states. Um, yeah. So it was in the Olympic. He got a silver in the one thousand five hundred. That yesterday. was so painful. Yeah, he so pushed <laughs> definitely, but he couldn't. So, <laughs> so, so Josh, Josh yeah. um, was um, from their school. Okay. Um, okay. So and what school? What school do you attend? Uh, George Watson's College. Okay. Fantastic. That's a private school. Yeah. Wow, well, impressive. <laughs> 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 so you've got it. Oh, Kishi. <laughs> <laughs> You've got potential scholarship um, on the horizon. You're doing well in academics. You're this amazing, um, you know, sports personality. And then, so with the sports, I'm just trying to see how things have progressed. So you you started doing more competitions, right? Yeah. So then, at maybe, and maybe that was that that maybe the answer is already the question is already answered. Okay. Uh, how do you then? Are you part of the, is there i'm trying to understand is there like a scottish team a scottish national team are you part of the team how did that all come to be yeah so there's like the scotland team that has more seniors so it's not really under 17s but my relay team was picked because our our team is faster than the females team, team. and then there's the siab team that's based on your performance at scottish schools so if you get first or second in your event then you compete for Scotland and Syab, and this year it was in Wales. Okay, that was the one you guys did this amazing, amazing trip. trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think our, our listeners did to hear that story. <laughs> so Kishi, I want to. T- I know it's a long story, so I want, I want okay. it to come from you. So we flew from Houston. No way. Take it back. So you guys were in America. <laughs> yeah, we're in America on holiday. Yes, <laughs> for I think three weeks. Yes, and then I was forced to train, unfortunately. 
and then <laughs> you're forced to train in america yeah wow okay in the heat so you found a truck to actually go train yeah. while you're on holiday yep well, that's an athlete spirit yeah <laughs> you don't look excited about that no i did i did not want to <laughs> <laughs> i did not want yeah. to okay okay um should i start describing the story yep. the journey mm-hmm. back yep. so we flew from houston to the, where was it philadelphia philadelphia and then the flight from philadelphia to heathrow was delayed so then when we flew to heathrow they didn't let us get our flight back to edinburgh and then we had to wait in a massive queue that took the, an hour plus and then we spoke to the lady and she gave us train tickets back to edinburgh but then that would have taken like four hours even though the coach with um everybody on the team for syab had already left the, the coach had left england left from glasgow from glasgow edith was wales yeah right from okay 6 a.m that day okay so then we decided that we would take the train to our family friends and then see if we could borrow a car and then drive to Wales. And your family friend was in London? Orpington? Yeah. Okay. Is just that outside, around? Is that just London? outside London. London. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, so we... Kent area. We okay. got the car. I had to move stuff from the su- from the big suitcase into yeah. the small suitcase. And then we got in the car. We drove to Wales, which was about five hours, I think. And it took six. Six. And that was an electric car as well. So you yeah, had to so stop we had to and stop charge, to charge. And... Uh, and then when we got there everyone was in a meeting the t- there was a team meeting so i just walked in <laughs> in the silence and everybody was looking at me then one of the coaches was like oh i've got your dinner <laughs> shouted it in front of everyone uh, and then i had to collect my kit as well and then that was the day over yeah and i was so tired so i can imagine yeah because how, how many hours of traveling was that for all the way from this ship Houston. Oh, Houston. Yeah. How many hours Houston. from Houston yeah. to like two Wales? Two days of travel. Two days. Yeah, more, more like well, it felt like two days because yeah. of was the time days? zone change. But All right. more like um, twenty-four hours. Yeah, yeah, continuous movement. You think it's more than twenty-four yeah. hours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had to carry the heavy suitcases as well. Yeah. All over yeah. the train stations yeah. and yeah. onto yeah. the different trains. Yeah. So that day happened to be so when we got to Heathrow and because they had delayed our flight from Philadelphia, getting to Heathrow, um, Heathrow was a mess, um, and it was the first day apparently. Um, the BA um, airport staff were saying that it was the first day of the um, English school holidays as well. Oh. So when I even looked on the the app to try and get a car hire from Heathrow. Not, ch- not sure. <laughs> it was a big challenge. <laughs> so the the option was like, okay, where do we go from from here? Um, and then um, I like, okay, um, well, we've got friends like family around. Um, well, not very, you know. If you know London, then you know mm. uh, it's a it's a fair travel as well, because mm. um, it took us about an hour and a half to get to even get from the airport from the airport to Kent to, and to, to Kent, um, and, and swap over. get get in there then do this swap over and then starting to drive um and i was tired myself i was gonna <laughs> say how did you survive I, 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 that drive I, I, I was tired <laughs> myself and and to make matters a bit you know uh more difficult that day um the the a248 i believe was closed because of an accident so that mm. would have made the journey about four and a half hours um so that was that made that route was closed um both ways because of an accident on the day and um, so we had to go through a roundabout route so a journey that was meant to even take four and a half took us about six hours um to get her to to base to meet with our team um and then i just circled back <laughs> um, okay because then she could just take the bus with her team so she'll be then back coming home. back with the yeah. coach um after their competition they'll be coming back together um with the team but yeah it's part of the sacrifices that we yeah we how so yeah. how was the competition then how did you perform if, if you can uh, ask Relay team we yeah. got gold, but we didn't bre- we didn't beat our British record, which okay. we were hoping for. Okay, okay. Um, and what's the British so the record? If I meant to ask, um, 
The, I need to check that. Okay. One. So really, is that they set, one they set the too. record as well? Themselves. Yeah, oh, I, saw, okay. I saw that. Yeah. So they've got a current record for British under really seventeen, under, uh, under seventeen, um, and I think under it's up on, under, 18 under eighteen British record um, for relays. Okay. Wow. Is what they so their aim was to go and uh, beat that record, again. They want yeah. to just like uh, Duplantis was doing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the pole vault at the Olympics, yeah. breaking his own record. It, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean they didn't. They didn't get to that, but um, I, I, I still getting gold in the in the event. But uh, yeah, I think what, what we can pull out from that story is the amount of sacrifice. Yeah. Because the, the bit Kishi didn't say, because I've heard the story before, was you actually had to cut your journey short. Yeah, right? she actually. She, she had to, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you guys were too supposed to be in Houston at that point. So you had to like, just cut it short, we need to go. And then, right, you need to book a flight and all that. So... Yeah. Um, our relay time was... Forty-five nine one. Yeah, 45. that's the record. Or yeah, the, that's, that's the record. time we got. Okay, okay, fantastic. So and and then the financial part as well, right? So there's and I, I want you to to share from your point of view as the should I say the recipient or the beneficiary? Um, how do you see the amount of I, I don't know financial sacrifice that that your parents are making or the family is making for yeah. this to to be? Well, for Syab, it was quite. It's like we had to pay for kids, and then we had to pay for travel, and then they also have to buy me lots of sports clothes, mm. and then running spikes can be quite pricey, especially the sprinting ones. Yeah, yeah. Give, give me a, give me a number. Yeah, so running spikes, yeah. The running spikes yeah. I got are two hundred fifty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so the one I bought for my son was rubbish. Then <laughs> that, that was I that was fifty quid. <laughs> no, I, I think it's okay for his. Yeah, for his well, I, I yeah. started off with spikes that yeah. were costing like fifty pounds. Yeah, okay. and then okay. it's only recently I got these spikes. Okay, okay. So okay. it's interesting. Sorry. You go. No, no, no. I just she she mentioned only the the spikes. What about the other um kits? The kits that you got for sale? Yeah. Um, full kit they said was 150, but how much did you pay? Um, yeah, but you don't have to get the full kit yeah. because you don't okay. need the full kit. Because so you can you can choose yeah. you can choose yeah. um, from the kit. But that's just a one off. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, a, it's constant. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. you're, you're buying um, trainers as well. They are they are going through trainers because mm -hmm. that's what they use for the training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they will go through that much more than, than the average person. Per, yeah. The average yeah. person that just use trainers for um, and, and then it gets to a point where they are not just buying any trainers. Yeah. Um, it needs yeah. to be able to work with their training. Um, so they are looking for particular training um, shoes to buy, and not just in terms of the quality, the quality and what the, it's what made the stuff, for, yeah, what, what what it's yeah, made for. Yeah. So so they are, so it, it becomes um, and and I mean parents as a, as a parent supporting, and I believe it's it's for most uh, um, sports and athletics at this stage. It's the parents that take the brunt of most of the financial burden um, at this stage. Yeah, um, and now I, it got me thinking, like two fifty, right? <laughs> Not everyone can afford two fifty, right? For for a pair of trainers, quote and unquote, quote yeah. and unquote, mm -hmm. yeah, for a pair of shoes or, or spikes. So does it mean then that for one to go through, you know, from age nine or wherever, and go all the way to become part of the Scotland team? you need a bit of you need to be financially sound like can someone who is on minimum wage or someone maybe on benefits can they survive in this world are there options for them is, yeah. my, is my is what i'm thinking because for those listening they may think 250 flip i'm not getting into that spot are there other ways to still sort of circumvent that world i think i think there's always a way mm -hmm. um, and there's always there's that saying that where there's a wheel there's yeah, a way. There's a way. Yeah. So um, I, I, I would say to parents, I mean, not, not to be put off by the mention of money when your children wants to be involved in, because I, I, I she has a cousin, my, my, bro, my cousin's... Um, your brother's... Your brother's... Or your sister's... No, no, actually, my cousin's daughter. Okay. okay. Um, also, uh, she plays football. Okay. And, and she plays for the Scottish Under-17 team okay. um, at the moment as well. So they're going through the same things as well. 
um, from that perspective in terms of you know the the football shoes mm -hmm. um, and 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 the likes the you, you have to yes yeah, the so games uh, the, the games so it's but there there will always be a way and um, what I would say is that you engage the the the, the coaches um, you engage the the, the team um, where there's need for assistance don't don't keep it to yourself mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sure that there, there are venues out there um, to support um, sports people, but don't just keep it to yourself and don't be don't don't be put off by by the the mention of money, um, because at the end of the day, um, if the child find it fulfilling, you yourself as a parent, you will be fulfilled um, that you have allowed your child or um, to 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 blossom and be who they want to be, and that that's the most important thing. So more like seeing it as an investment, a future investment. <laughs> I would like <laughs> to <laughs> <an> investment. <laughs> just I, I would like to use that word <laughs> yeah. investment. Investment, maybe just <laughs> what you do. Because when, when, when <laughs> as a parent, when when a ch your child is is fulfilled in any chosen endeavor, and be it you know we're talking sports and athletics as 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 we speak. Um, you yourself will find it um, that you you yourself will be fulfilled as a parent and you'll be proud of how they have become. I mean, we're going through the Olympics now. I mean, you can see a lot yeah. of proud parents out mm -hmm. there. Um, and, and, and it's just, you know, the, the, the sacrifices will pay off um, at some point. The sacrifices will pay off. Um, well, you yourself will be proud. And, you know, while, you know, in, in the sporting world is a very short... Um, career Span. career lifespan yeah. mm -hmm. but what what you see is that a lot of a lot of athletes go on to walk around their sports. sports afterwards as well and so they enjoy what they're doing in life they're not stuck in a place where they they're just doing it just for the sake of doing it but they are part of what they enjoy yeah. in one form or the other and that helps them in in every aspect of their life um, afterwards so there's something I want to touch on that I, I don't think we've touched on so far. Okay. Yeah, and that's the aspect of training. You mentioned when you were in Houston, you had to train. Yeah. So do you have like a, a specific schedule for training in terms of when I mean um, specific? Is there do you have to be like on a certain type of diet? Do you have to be on maybe a strict timeline because? You, I'm thinking about it in the sense of personal training as well as training with your team. W what's that like? Um, I don't really have a specific diet because I just eat what I want. But okay. then sometimes you like you like the sound of that. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, I'm not judging. <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> but sometimes I'll ask for something and then it will be a no because I need to watch what I'm eating. And then I pay more attention to what I'm eating before the day of a competition. And then for training, it's normal on Mondays we do like long runs to build like speed endurance. And then Wednesdays is more weights and starts and stuff and hill runs to make us more powerful. And then I'll be joining the Friday groups for speed endurance as well. That's a lot. Okay. Yeah. Because I thought so you mentioned um weights weights training. I thought so my son was nine years old. Is begging me to start doing it wait and i'm like no <laughs> uh, but then I, I went online to check what the minimum age is and it says 16. so is there a different rule for athletes or is 16 not the minimum age for weight training i'm not too sure actually because we don't yeah. do like intense intense weight training yeah. we'll just have like um dumbbells and then yeah. we'll be just be running good. so yeah. we okay. have the like the correct form or we get medicine balls and we're doing squats or we're okay. throwing them. Okay. And then we'll get the sled where we tie the belt and then we have the weight behind us and we so just have to run. Yeah, we just have to run like yeah. thirty meters. Okay. Okay. So it's just not too strength. intense. Yeah. Okay. 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 Interesting. So why did you enjoy the one you did in Houston? The weather, the bugs. <laughs> And I just didn't really want to train on holiday because I was eating too much. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> it's interesting as well. So did you take your running kit with you on holiday? Yes, and spikes. Is that normal? <laughs> 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 Tell me. <laughs> that's, 
Is that normal? Is that what you do normally? So when you go to Spain, you go into Lanzarote, uh, actually, you pack some spikes. <laughs> you pack everything. <laughs> all, when we went on holiday in October on the cruise, we all took our sports stuff. Mm. So we could still be doing, like, there was a walking track on the top. So we just walk there sometimes or we could go to the gym. Mm. Okay. So it's, it's, yeah, and it's I a think lifestyle. Because, sorry, go on. No, you go ahead. No, and I was going to say, I mean, the, the whole rationale for that was because we're they were going to actually stay longer in the States. And um, we're looking at possible clubs where they could do short term in the period that they were going to be um, in that area where they could join and, and just train um, casually, nothing yeah. formal with yeah. them. So we're looking yeah. up those options. So that influenced the, the packing of, of that. Uh, okay. the spikes okay. and yeah, getting ready for wait, yeah. <laughs> I feel your pain. I feel your pain. <laughs> so it's funny, right? When I go to when I'm, when I'm on holiday, go to the hotel and I see this massive gym. I'm like, who goes to gym on holiday? <laughs> I I seriously I cannot because I I think I'm a relatively fit guy, right? So I I would do the gym when I'm at home, but then when I'm on holiday, there's no way I'm going to the gym. So I'm I'm just always perplexed <laughs> around you know people being on holiday and still going to the gym so i guess you're one of those people well, sometimes, <laughs> <I just sometimes. laughs> i think if you've just if it's if it's a lifestyle it just becomes like second nature it's it a lifestyle for me though yeah. <laughs> so i do like when uh, this week alone so this is wednesday i've been to the gym twice Okay. And I'll try and do another two before the end of the week. So it is a lifestyle. But it's just that I just switch off when I'm annoyed. I'm like, I'm annoyed. They switch off. I'm enjoying life 100%. Then when I get back home, you go you back. Continue. Yeah, that, go that, that's it. fine. I yeah. mean, because you, you have clear cuts. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know when, I mean, when you're on holiday, you want to break cut it off and mm. then you go back to it and you're consistent with it yeah. so I, I think it's fine and yeah. that's not a problem some people just uh, they want to justify their holiday in. <laughs> so, so they will <laughs> <laughs> they will need to do some exercise to justify you know lounging during the holidays yeah but, I mean, and, and, and you, you, you talked about food as well is there training I mean is there diet guidance given to you at this level or are you just looking up things online yourself it's mostly my dad that's been like influencing what I eat, but okay. I don't normally. I, I just eat like a normal person. Okay, okay. okay. that's good. So that's not okay. Okay, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's good to know. But the reason I ask, I ask that as well is because, as I said, my son is now asking me, Dad, should we have? It? My son is weird, right? <laughs> he's a nine years old, but he's thinking like like an adult. Like, dad, I need, I need a diet. I need to know what I'm eating to help me build my strength and my this. And I'm like, who? just eat the more food. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it should it should enjoy it now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and that's that's what I say to her mm -hmm. as well because the the more competitive he gets mm -hmm. and the older he gets, that's when those things. Really matter, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I, I think they, they, there was a sheet that they gave you guys a while ago in terms of nutrition and. Oh, at school, they had um, a nutritionist come in. Yeah, a sports nutritionist yeah. came to give them guidance Some on tips. so ex exactly. So those things will begin to come to play the older and then the more you know, um, serious they begin to take this, then those things will come in. So for your son. Let him enjoy now. That's the thing. I want him to enjoy, but he doesn't want to enjoy. He's even he's now calling people out when he sees them drinking coke. He's like, see that he's drinking. See that person they're drinking coke. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, no, you you're drinking coke as well. Pop up, like drink. <laughs> but but so like, you're 15 years old. You're you just finished the nat five. You've got these old athletics things thing going. How do how do you? think that has helped you maybe i don't want to use the word help i don't want to influence your response how do you think that has made you different to an average 15 year old or what benefits has it brought to you if any i think that like it's built my like, sense of commitment because okay. if i miss training i wouldn't i wouldn't be happy so i try to make it to training every week and then try to sign up for all the competitions i can and training is Four days a week, from what you said. Twice, twice and then a week. twice. But well, she should be joining the third one. That's the yes, Friday yeah. one. Okay, mm. okay, twice a week. Okay, and then sometimes you have to, you, you do competitions at the weekend. Yeah, right. So discipline. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and how does that then translate to your academics? Does it affect your academics? Well, sometimes I'll be focusing too much on athletics, 
and then not enough on my revision because okay. when it was when I was doing exams I had to stop training for a period of time because I had to focus on my revision and that happened over prelims as well I had to focus on revision so I couldn't go to training as much okay so was that influence was it your coaches telling you you've got exams don't come or was that I don't know your parents, parents. and you saying them got parents <laughs> It's a okay. parents call. Yeah. yeah. So it, it sounds like it's a family affair then. Yeah. It's yeah. very like the parents are involved, your sibling, your sister is involved as well. Like everybody's really focused on let's see how much support you can provide, you know, to Kishi is what I'm yeah. hearing. Okay. I think that's actually a very good thing because at at her age, it would also help to like build her confidence and know that she has like a support system, mm. you know, that's backing her. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very good thing. Yeah. Fantastic. Do you so, have a role model, like someone you probably aspire to be in their position? Apart from me, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> someone else. <laughs> um, probably Shikari Richardson. Okay. They okay. got silver in the Olympics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So why why her? Because she seems very like determined and dedicated to her goals, and she always she go always goes out to achieve them. Okay. 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 So do you like not no allows style of sportsmanship? The I'm not talking. Big, I'm not a big fan. Okay. <laughs> not a big f- but he's he's talented but mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of his attitude. Okay. So what don't you like about his attitude? He's too cocky. Yeah. Cuz okay. he's his mental state is really good for a sprinter cuz he's always like I'm coming first and everything. But he needs to be like more respectful of the other athletes in the race, I think. Cuz he's he's not He's not a very toned down person. But that's mm. his brand. <laughs> <laughs> but there's other Usain Bolt wasn't like that and he's got world records. Yeah. Mm. That's a good uh, point. Well Bolt has his own had his own, own too. style. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. had his own style. But they can everybody can be Bolt's way. Uh, I yeah. understand where you're coming yeah, from. I get but that, every, yeah. everybody can be Bolt's way. Um and, and I think someone like him is needed in the sports. You need yeah, someone shouting about yeah. the sports. So imagine if there was no, I was telling my wife, I was like, imagine if there was no no allows in that 100 meters, it would have been a boring 100 meters. Yes, yeah. But everybody was looking forward to it, like, right, let's see who's going to beat no allows or if not win. So you need that person to help you hype your sport up because then it brings more money into the sport. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah. So he's the one taking one for the team. I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, defi- he's definitely made people more aware of athletics. Yep. Because there's like, there was celebrities watching the races mm. as well. Yep. Because after I've seen boats, I think 100 meters and athletics are just sort of... Uh, yeah. 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 And then now that Noah has come a- a- along, people are interested again. They're like, oh, yeah. who's going to happen? Who's going to beat Noah? Or who's Noah going to beat? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Or, or what, what's Noah saying? Definitely. So, okay. So I guess you're, you're going to take a different approach, a more respectful... Yes. More, more calm. More British. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Daniel. What's that guy's name? Daniel. Um, the British sprinter Zarnell Hughes. Zarnell Hughes, sorry, Zarnell Hughes. I find him boring. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I would agree. He's not. <laughs> he's not really like putting himself out there. For, yeah. But then he doesn't need to be like no allows to yeah. be still, that successful. Still, yeah, yeah. 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 You, still need, you still need your brand. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. So. Apart from everything you're doing in sports, you're now 15 years old. You've been in this sport for, so yeah, I, c- I could say that. You've been in this sport for Four eight years. years, almost a decade. Let's <laughs> use almost a decade. That, that's major, right? Yeah. So um, I guess you're now getting to that point where some people are looking up to you and maybe you're beginning to support younger people. Is that is that the case? Are you getting there now? I Especially now that you're winning so, medals? On a Monday before I train, I coach with Zoe. I coach run, jump, throw. For okay. an hour before I train. So run, so jump, throw is what you started with. Yes. When yes. you're seven years old. Yeah. Right. So I okay. often like talk to them, and then sometimes they'll see me compete, and they'll be like, "Oh, what's? How do you like work on your running form, or something?" Or they'll ask me when we're coaching, "How do I jump further or throw better?" So I like I like helping them with that kind of thing. Okay. So we're getting to the end. <laughs> so thirty years from now. We bring you back into the studio. I'm almost, <laughs> I'm almost seventy. Um, <laughs> Juliet has left for America, <laughs> but I'm still here. And what would have happened between now and the next thirty years 
for you to be able to tell me 30 years from now that I've had a successful career? Mm -hmm. Hoping for some world championship medals. Okay. Olympic Is there in any, any, any specific... Um, is it 100, events. 200 or anyone? Is it events they call um, it? Is it? Yeah. Hoping for 100, 200, I'm still building more okay. speed endurance for it. Okay. But mostly 100, I would say. Okay. okay. So that's like a goal. Definitely. Okay. No, so championships, not Olympics. Uh, championships and Olympics. Okay. Maybe world records even. Okay. okay. Fantastic. What about brands that you're thinking of like working with? Is that part of the plan as well? Yeah. I don't really mind. I don't really mind, but hopefully Nike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you do mind. <laughs> I'd be happy with any. Yeah. I'd be happy with any. Fantastic. Okay. For So for other young people listening who are thinking of going into sports or they're already in sports, what advice do you have for them? I would say stay focused on your goals and be determined to achieve them. Like that. So, Kishi, we have a tradition on the show here where we ask guests to give an advice for the next guest. So you don't know who the next guest is, but you just give an advice. So the previous guest we had left an advice for you, which I think is actually perfect. It's perfect. For yeah. you. So he and he doesn't said, know you. Yeah, he doesn't know yeah. you. Uh, his name is Keme Adeoye, and he said you should enjoy the journey and take lots of pictures. <laughs> when he said well like this is perfect it's perfect yeah. for the next <laughs> guest so because yeah it's, it's a journey right there's a lot of mm -hmm. ups and downs yeah. and so just take lots of pictures you can look back on those pictures and smile or capture maybe, every memory yeah so it's your turn to leave our next guest an advice, an advice. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be anything super deep uh Never forget the people that got you to where you are. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. You've, brought, you've taught her well, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's enough. So never forget the people that got you to where you are. Yeah. yeah. So I guess for you, it's going to be your coaches, yeah. your running mates, your parents, your yeah. family, your school, and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And on that note, we come to the end of the show today. Um, it's been enjoyable listening to kishi hearing our inspirational story and even our inspirational aspiration if i could yeah. say that um thank you Tayo, for joining us in the studio it's for bringing pleasure. kishi along thank you Juliet, you've been fantastic and that's all we've got for you on the moment with shadi and enoch show this week uh, we look forward to seeing you again um next week bye now thank you thank you